so reading carefully here, monthly mortgage payments can be found using the formula below. Here it is. The capital M stands for monthly payment. The capital P stands for your amount borrowed. Bless you. R is your annual interest rate. N is the number of monthly payments. So the bank's family would like to borrow 120000 What variable does that stand for, Evan? Is that the monthly payment? Are they making a monthly payment of $120,000? They better be the Kardashians if they are. What'd you say? Yes, good. One twenty. They qualified for an annual interest rate of 4.8%, Cameron. What's that? Okay, so you're gonna plug in 4.8 for R? You sure? Yeah, point, not 0.48, because that would be 48%. 0.048, good. Algebraically determine the fewest number of whole years. So they're looking for which variable, essentially, are we gonna have to find? Maggie? Yes, we're going to have to find this. We're going to have to adjust, though, because N is going to be the number of monthly payments, and they're asking for the number of whole years. But we'll get there once we find N. The bank's family would need to include in the mortgage agreement in order to have a monthly payment of no more than 720 So we're, we're going to figure this out as if their, their monthly payment is exactly 720 and then adjust and answer the question from there. So let's plug in, try to write small. We have 720 equals, there's my big denominator. Capital P is 120,000. R is 0 0.048 over 12. One plus 0 0.048 over 12. To the nth power, I don't know, so I'm keeping that in N. All over parentheses 1 plus 0.048 over 12 to an nth again minus 1. Okay, the first thing we should do is clean up what we can from a number standpoint. So what could we use our calculator to kind of clean up, do you think, Aiden? Okay. I get 0 .004, so you're just going to change this to a 0 .004. What else could we do to kind of do this all at the same time? Would you say, Cameron? Multiply that by the 120,000 as well. What about multiplying it by this? Grace, what do you think? Right, that, this would be a big no-no. You can't multiply this times this times this because then you'd be inadvertently raising these two to the nth power and that's not the point. So I'm just going to multiply these two. So that 0.004 that I got times 120,000. Be careful. You're just going to give me a 480, which is nice. 720 equals 480. So even though I can't multiply the 480 by what's in parentheses, I can simplify this. Yes? What's inside those parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.048 divided by 12. Why is that going to give me the wrong answer? Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. I do only want to multiply the, or divide the 0 0.048 divided by 12, so that should be fine. 1.004 is my base. Over. Did you notice on the bottom how that's the same thing as on the top? So that's another 1.004 to the nth power minus one. I don't know if we've ever had a variable in the exponent in two different places. Have we? Does that look? Okay, so we have to ad uh, address that situation. The good news is they have the same base. So once you see it, I think it'll make sense to you. If they ever did have different bases, we would not be able to do this problem algebraically. So the fact that they have the same base allows us to um, 
eventually we'll be able to kind of get those together. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of our fractions. We're going to cross multiply. When we cross multiply here, we're multiplying 720 by a binomial. So what do we have to do? Distribute. Again, with this 720, though, in the 1.004, I cannot multiply those because that 1.0, I can't, like, actually simplify that. I just have to leave it as 720 times 1.004 to the nth power minus, and then when I do multiply 720 times negative 1, I can multiply that out. And that will equal 480... 1.004 to the nth power. So I need to get all of these together. Yes? And, and essentially, they're kind of like terms. We have 720 of these things on the left and 480 of these things on the right. We need to get them all together. So I'm going to subtract these 720 over. So 480 of these things minus 720 of these things leaves me with negative 240 of these things, and now I should be at a familiar looking place. Kaylee Smith, what do I first do to both sides to get me to solve this for n? Very good, divide away that negative 240. That's gonna give me three, excellent. Followed by what, Maddie? Yep, yep. Log base 1.004 on both sides, and that'll cancel that. So we will get n equals, and math, your log is under your math. It's been a while, maybe, log base. 1.004 of 3. 275.2 monthly payments. Now, that's exactly how many monthly payments we would have to make if we were going to use exactly 720 as our monthly payment. We can't, what happens if we, if we cut down the number of monthly payments? What's gonna happen to the amount of the monthly payment we would have to do? It would increase. If you make less monthly payments, the actual value of your monthly payment would have to go above 720. So even though 275 is the nearest whole number, we would actually round this to 276. You can't cut this down anymore because then your dollar amount would go above 720 and they said they absolutely can't afford that, even if it's by 10 cents. So we would have to say, now in the scheme of this problem, it doesn't matter much anyway because we are bringing this to whole years, but I did want to address that issue. So 276 months, and they want the fewest number of whole years. So 276 months is how many years? We would just take 276 and divide it by 12 months to see how many 12 month intervals go into that. And that's 23 years. Now here's where this would have worked out if you didn't think about that and you just took your, your um, 275.2, if you just took that number of months and divided it by 12 anyway, that would have rounded to 23 years. But you, I have seen problems where they, maybe they don't want you to round that and they say, what's the fewest number of months? And you would have to go with 276, which is tricky. Okay? All right. So, switching gears here, because we have a same type of problem, totally different formula. Um, is it totally different? Yeah, it is. I mean, there are similarities, but it, it is not the same formula. So Jim is looking to buy a vacation home for 172600 
near his favorite southern beach. The formula to compute a mortgage is here. And here they kind of like condense the information, but the formula to compute a monthly mortgage payment M. So right here they're telling you that the mon monthly mortgage payment is what capital M is. P is the principal amount of the loan. Uh, R is the monthly interest rate again. N is the number of monthly payments. And Jim's bank offers a monthly interest rate of 0.305% for a 15-year mortgage. Now, with no down payment means, and this um, it's not coming up in this problem, but it will come up on your homework. No down payment means that's the amount he's borrowing. If that's the price of the home, that's the amount he's borrowing. If you're not making a down payment. Realistically, there's usually a down payment. So if, let me give you an example here though, just so we're clear. If his down payment was $10,000, what would you use for P then? The principal amount of the loan. 162,600, yes? So sometimes you have to do that little math on your own, that sidestep of here's what the house costs, but here's my monthly payment, here's my down payment. So I'm actually only borrowing 162,600. That's not on the table here, but it will show up in your homework. So we need to determine Jim's mortgage payment. So we're searching for M, round it to the nearest dollar. So M equals, what's capital P? Tell me. Kaylee M. Good. Times, you got a big fraction coming up. What am I going to plug in for R, Isaiah? Very good. That's tricky because the percentage already was a decimal. You're play, paying less than 1% already per month, so it looks very long and it is. One plus point zero zero three zero five. What am I plugging in for N Jordan? Number of monthly payments. What'd you say? One hundred and eighty. John, do you know where that came from? Perfect. Very good. 50, that was another little sidestep of mental math. 15 years, 12 months, 180. Over, we have the same thing on the bottom, 1 plus 0 0.00305 to the 180th power, minus 1. Okay. So, it looks a little different, and that's Fine, I'm actually gonna condense this into a single fraction. So if I put this 120, 172,600 over one, I can kind of do what I did last problem and just multiply this by this to clean things up a bit. Are you with me there? So 172,600 times the point zero zero three five. not touching this at all. Oh, I did point zero zero three five. did you hear me? It's point zero zero three zero five gives me 526.43, so M equals 526.43. Now I can also just add one onto this, right? Do 1.00305 to the 180th power over 1.00305 to the 180th power minus one. Ready to go from here? Put the M over 1 and cross multiply. When I cross multiply to this binomial, I'm, oh, what am I doing? Yeah, silly old me, I'm wrapped up in the last problem. M's already by itself. Just type that in. It's a beautiful thing. 526.43 parentheses 1.00305 to the 180th power. Oops, I didn't mean to get rid of this denominator. 
get that. I'm going to get that numerator first. So that's 910.76. I'm only rounding that, by the way, to write it on my paper. I'm not rounding that. So that number is what I got. And then I'm going to divide that by, keep parentheses around that denominator because it is a binomial. Higher parentheses and denominator, 1247.49. To the nearest dollar, 1,247. Okay. The second part switches it up a little bit and wants us to algebraically determine and state the down payment round to the nearest dollar that Jim needs to make in order for his mortgage payment to only be $1,100. So essentially, we're going to have to figure out what size loan is he allowed to take out in order to make the monthly payment only $1,100. So M is now $1,100. We no longer know the principal. That's what we're going to be solving for. And then we still know that everything else is the same. The rate is still this uh, 0 0.00305. 1 plus 0 0.00305 to the 180 over 1 plus 0 0.00. Apparently he couldn't afford the 1247. He can only afford 1100. So we're backing up and trying to figure out then what size loan is he allowed to take out. So really, to get P all by itself, how do I get rid of a fraction? Algebraically. Let's pretend it was 1100 equals P times 3 fifths. What would you do to get rid of 3 fifths? Multiply by the reciprocal, so don't make it any harder than it needs to be. Just on the left-hand side, you've got 1.00305 to the 180th power minus 1 up top over, this is just, it's all calculator work. It's only real ugly because the numbers are, unfortunately, realistic. So I'm on my calculator just going to type in this fraction, keeping a definitely the uh, uh, overall set of parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. Once I get that fraction, I'll multiply it by 1,100. So 1 point zero zero, well, parentheses and take my own advice, 1.00305 to the 180th power minus 1. Divided by 0 0.00305 times 1.00305 to the 180th. Take that answer, multiply it by 1100. 152,193. Does it say the nearest dollar as well? Yeah, so 152,193 is the amount that his principal loan can be. So if that's the size of the loan he's allowed to take, yet the house costs back up 172,600, what does his down payment have to be or how would you get it? Jay Kutch. This is the price of the house up top. This is the amount of the loan he's allowed to take. How do you figure out the down payment he needs to make? Andrew, can you help him out? Just find the difference. That's what the house costs. He needs to drop down the loan amount to this. So he needs to pay the difference up front. So 172,600 minus 152,193.
means he needs to pay 20407 up front, not unrealistic, to drop the loan amount down. And then his payment will be 1100 instead. Okay? So, real application, real formulas that are used to kind of figure all this out with all the different factors that exist with how what goes into your monthly payment. Obviously, the price of the home goes into it, the amount of the loan, the interest rate of the loan, and all that good stuff. Just out of curiosity, because you should know it just for good life skills, um, if he makes a monthly payment, let's pretend he made no down payment. If he makes a monthly payment of 1247 12 times a year for 15 years he will have paid $224,000 and 460 for this house that only cost 172600. Why did he pay more than the house cost? Grace because what about the loan? Interest. So to find out, that's what he actually paid, but the house was really only one seventy two six hundred of that. He paid $51,860 to borrow the money. That was the price you pay to borrow money, right? Um, have you done interest and stuff in other classes at all? Yeah. Um, House loans are like the lowest interest rate, usually. Car car loan interest rates are higher, so you, you pay you know a, a larger amount to borrow money. Um, but on a car, it's on a smaller value, so it doesn't add up to fifty two thousand worth. Credit card loan percentages are huge, which is why you never want to pay the minimum payment, right? Did someone teach you that at some point? They try to trick you. They say, "Oh, this is all you need to pay." But you pay in full every month. If you take one piece of advice from Mrs. Rahill, let that be it. <laughs>